Hey guys, so I've gotten a lot of questions about how you can goal seek multiple cells in Excel at once. So I'm going to show you real quick how to do this. Um, I'm working on the problem that we're working on right now in class, where we have this problem that we have to find the terminal velocity of a water droplet as a function of its radius. The problem is that the, uh, the terminal velocity depends on the drag coefficient. The drag coefficient has been curve fitted like we did in class as a function of the Reynolds number and as you all know the Reynolds number is a function of the velocity so we run into a circular reference issue if we try to just explicitly calculate everything we have to know something first so what we need is a solution by iteration which goal seek is perfect for so what I've set this spreadsheet up to do is to perform these calculation steps basically I'm gonna guess a value for the velocity like that and it's going to use that to calculate a Reynolds number and then a drag coefficient and then back calculate what the velocity should have been and the goal then is to get this to the point where these are the same value like this and that means I've guessed the right value and you notice that the calculated value for terminal velocity changed each time I changed my guess so I'm gonna need goal seek or solver in this case actually to guess the values for me and I want it to do all of them at once because I really don't want to have to do this, to do this 25 or 50 different times so I'm going to set this spreadsheet up to do this real quick but first I'm going to set up this row um, what solver is actually going to do is it's going to drive the sum of squared residuals to zero so a residual is just the difference between the calculated value and the guessed value that's my error basically in my guess <clears throat> so uh, in order to make sure that I don't end up with multiple residuals summing to zero because this one's negative 0.007 and say the next one's positive 0.007 that wouldn't be the actual solution that I wanted that would be an error so what I do in order to make them all be positive all the time is I square them now once I have more values and, and more significant error, this will not be zero anymore. So what I'm going to do is I am going to populate my range of R values. And here's a quick trick to do this real fast. I am going to give it the first one. I want them all to be 0 .0002 apart. Now select both cells, that's important, and you can just drag down and because you gave it an interval to start with, it will automatically populate the correct interval. I'm going to stop this just short of zero because at zero the formula breaks now I'm gonna go ahead and drag down the rest of my cells and as you can see I've got quite a bit of error here and this is my squared residuals so what I want to do so I can do this all at once because solver can only drive a single value to zero is I want to sum all of these guys up like so now, this is what I'm going to drive to zero, and when that's zero, all of these have to be zero in order for that to be the case. So let's go ahead and open up Solver, and we'll see how this is done. First, we're going to tweak the settings a little bit. I've already got this set up. Um, I want it to minimize. Generally, the minimize algorithm works a little bit better than setting to value of zero, though sometimes it doesn't hurt to try both and just see what kind of results you get. Um, I've got my objective cell, which is this sum of squares, where I just added up the squared residuals. And my variable cells are this range right here. These are my guesses for the terminal velocity. So it's going to guess values for all of these simultaneously until the sum of squares is zero. Let's see how this goes. Now, I was thinking I was going to edit that out, but that's actually a pretty good point. That Sometimes Solver messes up, and here it tried to find a solution by plugging in zero for a terminal velocity. And as I said before, when you put in zero in these equations, because there's a division here by the Reynolds number, things tend to break. So what that basically amounts to is that I had a bad guess. All my guesses were the same, and really these values should be much closer to zero then they should be to 16.9. So I'm going to give it a guess of 2, and I'm going to try to solve it again and see if I get something better. There we go. Now I've got the right solution. You can see I've got a continuous range 
uh, velocity values that decrease with decreasing radius and I can get the polynomial that I need now all I have to do is select these and I can get a scatter plot and I can take the data set add a polynomial trend line I want to show the R squared so I can get it close to 1 and there we go we've got our polynomial alright guys hope that helped